All right, welcome to our last stop at the Cinco Terre Manarola. And it looks like it's a village on the side of the mountain overlooking the Mediterranean Sea. We just got off our train ride and we are hungry. Now there are five towns here. If you follow our journey, you know we've already been to four of them in our past two videos. If you're new to our channel and you want to see all five of these amazing towns, you're going to want to check the description and watch those other two videos. Maybe watch them first. No, you can watch this one and then watch those. Let's go see the last town. There's a trail that w runs the whole distance of this Cinco Terre from the south end all the way to the north end, which is where our van is parked. And a lot of it's closed. We're here in the off season, which is really great. I can't imagine seeing this place when it's just packed with people. It's been a really time, nice time of the year. The weather's been great. It's cool enough where you don't get hot and sweaty and yet warm enough where you're not freezing your butt off. And uh, there's enough restaurants open where we can just kind of get in there. And so it's really worked out well. But guys, I'm excited to see this last city. To get to this little village, there's a long walk through the tunnel and you pop out right here at this beautiful restaurant with some narrow roads up the hill and it looks like up to the left is a nice big plaza but the first thing we need to do is find a place to eat. So this is definitely another little village down by the sea. And we can see all the little twisted rocks that have pushed up from the ground and the beautiful sea out there. Kind of charcoal blue this time of year. This is the one that has the only natural harbor. Now it's small, but the small little boats can come in here and drop you off really easy with the ferries. They got a nice place to protected place to put their fishing boats in the water and you can tell because all the boats are parked in the little main street coming down here and all along here but uh this one is more designed for easy ferry stops so during season you can take ferries to all these towns instead of just the train they also swim here of course in the summertime What is your name? Lisa. Lisa? Nice to meet you. Yes, sir. <laughs> All right, let's start by saying the music in there was too loud. We could not play it. But we ate at the Il Porticolo. And the food was delicious. Our waitress, our helper, Lisa. Lisa, she was from the Dominican Republic. And so there she speaks Spanish. So we brushed off our Spanish a little bit. So we were able to almost speak like <laughs> normal here. It was so cool and yeah. so different. So we started off our meal with a wine, a white wine that's very sweet with hints of 
citrus and it is grown literally on the terraces around this little town and um, it was perfect. We ordered one of the little baby half bottles. I had one glass, Kurt had a glass and a half. A little loco vino. Yeah, it was a nice way to start off lunch, especially since we're literally drinking wine that was grown right here in this town. So that was nice. And then I ordered a pizza. Go figure. <laughs> And it had sausage, really strong aged, delicious Parmesan, a little bit of tomatoy sauce, drizzled with pesto. So I was very pleased with it. Very, very thin crust, very good. Definitely a pizza you eat with a fork. Eat with a fork. Kurt it had, had a little bit of it. It had sausage on it, salchicha. I think sausage, anyway, sausage, <laughs> yeah. which Snow didn't care for it too much. It wasn't my favorite sausage. Worked out well for me. I love sausage no <laughs> he, matter where it's from. He picked it all off so. my pizza and ate it. So. And I had, I had a pasta dish, and it had ragu of rabbit, so rabbit ragu, and it had beetroot and cabbage. It was a Spirelli pasta and a light sauce and it was delicious i was able to sort of sop up the sauce with the pizza crust and it was really just a delicious meal it was a beautiful atmosphere and lisa yeah. was charming and a yeah. nice waitress and we really enjoyed that it wasn't a super expensive meal on the grand scale of things but it was definitely a splurge for us in the way we budget travel but if you're going to do it doing it surrounded by a little town like this sitting 50 feet from the Mediterranean Sea and these tall buildings. It was a good place to do it. It was good food. It was a nice experience. But now we're going to take you up the hill. Yeah, we're going to enjoy the rest of this town, guys. So Kurt is heading on up, but I'm going to have to pace myself because look how steep this walk up is. It's supposed to be the best view in all of Cinque Terre up here at the top. This place boast of one of the most scenic outlooks of all the cities but you got to work for it you got to climb up this hill and you can see us around the corner we get to look back at the town all right guys we were able to get up some elevation and wrap around this trail a little bit around this cliffside and we were able to get some epic views i hope you guys enjoy it this chinko tattery is definitely some eye candy and uh, definitely some stairs some altitude some climbing and some going down but definitely definitely worth the views and the visit what an amazing time i gotta go catch back up with snow and see if we can find where she is we have wined and we have dined <laughs> and we, we have, have found <laughs> one of the most beautiful outlooks I think that this city has to offer. Within the whole five cities. And I notice as we're staring at them, they're staring at us. All the windows in those tall buildings and balconies kind of have a perfect view for the sunset. We're not going to catch the sunset here, although this supposedly is the place to see it. We're going to go down and get one last look at this beautiful sea down by the water. There's some steps. There's some rocks to play on. We're gonna get down there before we wrap it up here at Cinco Terra. Snow, Snow, what's uh, been your favorite place so far? We've been to five so, cities. So it's definitely the whole place is bucket list worthy. And they all have their own unique characteristics. So as far as uh, for more casual and getting a more local vibe, I liked the hilltop city of Cognilia. Cognilia. Cornelia, Cornelia. Um, as far as the picturesque postcard view, I think we're standing at my favorite spot. Uh, I like the northernmost town because it's where we're camped and it's perfect because we could get there with our van. Uh, the city to the south, Rio Maggio, Maggio. Uh, was very unique. It, it had a lot of little narrow, cool alleyways. The one we did earlier, Vernazzo. Vernazzo had that one main street straight down to the water. I love them all. I can't pick a favorite. If you come here, you need to see all five. And you could try to pick your favorite, but mm, they're all beautiful. And you need to leave time. As we said, there's trails that go along here. You can generally hike the whole thing from city to city. A lot of them are closed right now. And some of them have sort of like avalanches or whatever and are 
intermittently closed, so you'll have to check that. The train is super convenient and easy and cheap. But to be honest with you, you got to spend some time yeah. here. You, it's, I don't see you doing don't, it in one day or two days. I mean, I know some people have to because they have careers and jobs and they're very limited on their time. But if you can do any kind of slow travel, spending three days in this area and being able to just casually stroll through these little narrow alleyways that may be a bit off of the tourist path that the tour guides take you on. I mean, you don't want to just get off here come here, go there, and leave. There's just too many little nooks and crannies that you'd miss. If you can spend three days here and do it slow, do it. And I just felt a couple raindrops. We gotta get down to the Let's water go. and get on the train and get out of here. Let's go check out the sea, guys. We're walking together Through any weather Look at this boat ramp. I don't know if they use those little apes to get down here to pull their boats or four by fours or if they push them up. Unfortunately, we're not here when we can see that happen. But it does allow us to get down by the water, which is stunning. You can see the waves kind of crashing up against the beautiful rocks here. And I will tell you that this is the roughest we've seen the sea since we've been here and that's not very rough at all but it really kind of gives me a perspective on how high and tall those buildings are as you come down here by the water and you just see them towering up above but snow was telling you that this is the only village that has sort of a natural causeway and you can kind of see it right here and there's a natural break from the water and obviously the boat ramp that we just walked down you can see a little boat down here in this little causeway and opening. And we'll go all the way down here to the wind, all the way down here to the end. Wow. Pretty epic, I do have to say. And here comes snow. I think I can, I think I can. Woohoo! How about snow, guys? A year ago, heart attack. A little more than a year ago. Battling back. What a champion. Now I gotta make it back to the train, though. It's just way up there. I can do it. I can do it. One last mention before we leave this beautiful town and head back to the van is there is also a water taxi service that will take you up and down the coast to all these cities in Chico Terre and more. However, we are here in the off season and the water taxi services are not running. So that is one reason to brave the crowds to get out here so you can see this stuff from the seaside, from looking back. And I imagine that is stunning, something we're not gonna get to, get to do. But just after talking to snow, we wouldn't have it any other way. Good morning. We are leaving our wonderful beach parking lot camp here in Monterosso. We gotta climb back out of here 
And then we're headed south. We got a supply up. We've been hanging out here for a while. We got to get some groceries. We got to get some water. Well, we spent three nights here and we just paid to leave and it was $58, right? So not too bad considering the location. I was expecting more like 75. I thought it was more per night. So we did pretty good. Let's get on the road. So I got to tell you, I am absolutely excited that we were able to get down to Monte Rosa and park the van and properly explore the five seaside cities of Cinco Terre. And it really, really, really made my heart smile to see Snow and how excited she was as she checked off one of the lifetime bucket list items of visiting these different coastal cities. You guys probably know from watching, she loves the sea, she loves the ocean, and this was just an amazing time for the both of us. But now it's time to drive up out of here, and I gotta tell you, not only is it awesome that we could get down there and park the van, but one of my favorite things about van life, and I think Snow would agree, is that we can drive through and see the countryside. And this national park of Cinque Terre, this national park is more than just the five coastal cities. There's forests, there's mountains, and there's other small towns too that don't reside on the coast. And so we are going to take this windy road through the national park. Now this is going to be up and down and slow and windy and narrow and well, we don't even know, and the weather's not the best today, but we absolutely love getting out there, scouring through the forest with our eyes, trying to pick up on wildlife, birds, staring down into the cities to see, look for, for farm life, for people life, looking at the houses, the structures, and all of that and more. And so we have to go down to the town of Las Piesa and supply up on our way to what is going to be a very special campsite and at this campsite that's where we're going to wind down the video so come on with come with us on this little scenic drive and enjoy this side of Cinco Terre. so we climbed our way out of Cinque Terre. we started driving south on a beautiful curvy road uh, through some little towns back here in the mountains and little. trees little forested mountain area yeah. and it's kind of rainy foggy misty wintry and oddly just kind of beautiful driving through here i mean you're coming along a little town pops up and sometimes it's like a little mix of modern and then all of a sudden you have an old building where you can just see all the stones and stuff where the way it was constructed and built and a church steeple popped up and and then you're back in the forest again. It's just a really curvy, hilly, fun ride. It is beautiful and we picked a good day to do some driving because the weather is dreary. Looks like we uh, squeezed in our visit to Cinque Terre just right by missing the rain. But Kurt's right, the rain makes this kind of stunning. We're working today. We have to have some place to put all these videos. <laughs> yeah, uh, we have filled up, I think, four and a half of these external four terabyte hard drives with all of our videos from Latin America. Time to get two new ones. Lots of video footage, guys. It ain't cheap being a YouTuber. <laughs> 240 euros. So, man, 260, 270 US dollars. Ouch! <laughs> We're stocked up on groceries. We got a new litter rug, which is very exciting. We'll see how that turns out in a minute. Lots of cat food for the kitties. A new phone cord, because somehow in our move from South America to Europe, we lost all our phone cords. And we're still trying to discover what's the best litter over here in Europe. So we got some new litter to try. Everything went good, except for Kurt forgot his breakfast sausages. <laughs> so we're going to get everything put away, check out our new litter rug, and get on the road. But chores are done, or errands are done, right? 
I think so. We just gotta Get find a camp spot. We made it to our wild camp spot and it is at the base of a fort and the fort is currently closed so we're gonna be wild camping up here which is really cool because my buddy me and my buddy get to explore and learn about this place and what happened here but this place I believe is a medieval fort and uh, the only problem with it is there's a lot of rubbish I've already picked up a bag of trash and there's no way I can dent all the rubbish that's up here but we did clean up around the van and where we parked and there's no one else up here so we're pretty excited about that we're pretty excited about some of the views that we have and this actually might qualify for one of the best wild spots we've had since we've been in Europe all right I was out walking G money and some people came down and they said the fort was open and there's an echo in here, as you can hear. Look at the different flags, but it's only open till one. So I had to shoot up here real quick. Snow wasn't quite ready. So I'm gonna give you guys a quick tour of this, but this fort is, from what I know so far, a little over 500 years old. And so we're gonna take a look and learn about it together. But look at this, wow. And we can get right up in here and walk and look. And you can see down below. And this fort has, fortress has a moat around it for protection and has several towers. And I think we're gonna be able to go into some. That's Las Piezas. And of course, we supplied up there last night. We stayed the night there in sort of just like a, a humble campground or whatever. It was just to fill up with water. We weren't there for long, didn't even film it, but we had just left Cinco Terre. And so we were looking for a place just to kind of settle in for a couple days, rest and recoup. And we found this place on the Google Maps and it looked like there was some parking there that uh, might be free, a little wild camping spot. And that's how we ended up here at this little fort. But just walking around it, I thought this would be a place where we would be able to take in some history at a little known spot and also kind of rest up and get caught, on, caught up on our editing. So that's what brought us here. But what a special place, look at this view that they have up here. And you can see the hills and the mountains all around us and it just shoots up and in this area in this region there's still some leaves left on the trees and this late in January you'd think they'd all kind of fallen away we've seen that in some regions but there's some kind of tree that's still holding the leaves you can see the van down there that's our camp spot and next to this little house here and they've got the little garden out back but there are just so many vineyards down here in this region that push up the mountainside so many small farms and as you get out in some of these rural bits where it's not able to build you get some spaces or some farms and then all of a sudden up on the hill you look out and you just have this big city up there so it's really kind of a unique environment all around this area really beautiful and actually for this time of year for me it seems very green and lush and then you have this big fortress on the hill right in the middle of it all so let's learn a little about this fortress and I think one of the most fascinating things to me is not only is this a trade route up from northern Italy to south of Italy and always has been even to today the highways and the trains run through sort of this this plateau along the coastline here so it's always been a very important trade route but also the shape 
of this here fortress and how it was made to deflect the cannon fire of the time and how it faces kind of a direction where the mountain kind of juts up and so the easiest point of attack basically to the fortress and how the main point the main arrow i think they call them merlins faces that but really kind of the shape and the direction and the taper of the walls and the angle of the walls to deflect the cannon fodder was really kind of fascinating to me and then a lot of these places where they have carved out for the for the sort of the gun holes or the cannons or whatever are also made from marble which again i find fascinating because there are the marble mines very close to here and spoiler alert we will be taking you guys to those in our next video so make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and then finally i'll say and this is not so much in the audio tour but if you look around there are a couple of castle buildings and other fortresses that help fortify this particular area so really just a fascinating tour and a really cool wild camping spot for a couple days all right guys we're headed down to the dungeon So these are little rooms right here for the dungeon and you can see these little holes right here are toilets <laughs> so they had little makeshift toilets in the dungeon and it was said that these places are not really for prisoners of war but more likely to punish for insubordination failure to follow orders and things like that so you can see sort of the tunnels for the, the makeshift toilets. And it looks like this might have been a little place for a little fire, for a little heating. <laughs> wow. Just absolutely fascinating. All right, the last part of the tour and my learning of this castle is around the communication trench. Now this trench runs around the entire wall of the fortress, so kind of inside the wall. And what they say is, even if this tunnel collapses, that the walls will still stand. So kind of it's built inside, independent of the walls. But this allowed them to run around, and there's all sorts of different little windows through here where they can peek their heads out and see where the enemies are and whatnot, but this allowed them to run around and to protect the fort. And this is actually pretty grand. Look at this, guys. Back in the day, this was pretty much an almost impenetrable fortress, but obviously, when planes and bombs and things like that came along, these things were no longer useful. How come the stars come to shine when it's dark from so far away? Show us where we are. Come on. What makes the sun? Go to sleep every night And what's it dreaming of? I wonder How come the sky sometimes hides behind the clouds? Maybe it's just like me A little bit scared of heights Why does the rain Always keep on pouring down when it's gray outside. It really makes me wonder. Yeah, it makes me wonder. It really makes me wonder. What wonder? How come the trees get sun? Could it be? 
Until winter comes Until winter comes Until winter comes It really makes me wonder If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!